Welcome to Data Domain Extended Retention, Installation, Configuration and Administration. Click the Notes tab to view text that corresponds to the audio recording. Click the Resources tab to download a PDF version of this e-learning. This course covers installing, configuring and managing a data domain system with the Extended Retention option. This material is intended for anyone responsible for implementing, managing, administrating and supporting the product. Upon successful completion of this training, you should be able to describe DD Extended Retention, features, functionality and use cases. You should be able to provide a high-level explanation of the DD Extended Retention architecture. Another objective of this course is to enable you to install, configure, manage and administer a data domain system with the extended retention option. This module focuses on DD extended retention as a solution, features and benefits, system architecture, hardware options, licensing requirements and common use cases. This lesson covers the need for long-term retention of backup data and the data domain extended retention software. There are several reasons why businesses keep certain sets of backup data for very long periods of time such as 7 years, 30 years or even longer. For example, a corporation or institution might need to comply with company governance policies, industry requirements, legal mandates and so on. Preserving intellectual property would be another motivation. The most common approach that businesses use to perform backup retention is to put select copies of backup images, weekly fulls or monthly fulls to tape, and then keep it on-site or off-site to meet the retention requirements. Tape is still a common solution for long-term retention of backup data. Data storage, specifically long-term backup storage, is one of the last holdouts for tape media. Tape is still common in data centers due to the perceived economic advantages. Tape cartridges are inexpensive, but they make up just a small fraction of the total cost of ownership. Tape automation, transport and storage space are expensive and ongoing. This is particularly true when upgrading and replacing large tape libraries. Also, companies expend significant resources to manage the tape infrastructure that could otherwise be creating business value. Additionally, there are significant operational challenges with tape infrastructure. Accessing a retained file stored on tape takes a significant amount of time, especially if it is off-site. In addition, the measured failure rate for restoring data from tapes is relatively high. Also, offline tapes do not provide search ability and online information access. Finally, the risk of theft from data on tapes during transportation also poses serious security challenges. Data Domain has made very significant inroads in eliminating tape as the preferred media for short-term backups for disaster recovery but for long-term retention and despite all of its shortcomings, tape is still the more common media. Data Domain Extended Retention software enables long-term backup retention on data domain systems without the need for tape. It is a software option only for supported data domain systems. Data Domain Extended Retention software transparently incorporates 
two tiers of storage on a data domain system to achieve cost-effective scalability while delivering the high throughput required to ingest hundreds of terabytes of backup data. With DD Extended Retention software, data domain systems are now positioned to provide cost-effective long-term backup retention and completely eliminate tape from the infrastructure. The two long-term retention solutions for data domain are extended retention and cloud tier. However, customers can only leverage one of these. Extended retention provides an internal tiering process that enables cost-effective long-term retention of backup data on a data domain system and minimizes the reliance on tape. The internal two-tiered file system of a data domain extended retention enabled DD system consists of an active tier and a retention tier. Cloud tier feature of data domain enables the movement of inactive data from an active tier of a data domain system to a low cost and a high capacity object storage like a public, private or hybrid cloud. Conceptually, the cloud storage is treated as an additional storage tier attached to the data domain system and data is moved between tiers as needed. This lesson covers extended retention features and benefits, protocol support, replication flexibility and licensing. The internal two-tiered file system of a data domain extended retention enabled system consists of an active tier and a retention tier. The file system, however, appears as a single entity. Incoming data is first placed in the active tier of the file system. The data in the form of complete files is later moved to the retention tier of the file system as specified by your individual data movement policy. For example, the active tier might retain weekly, full and daily incremental backups for 90 days, while the retention tier might retain monthly fulls for 7 years. The retention tier is comprised of a retention unit which may draw storage from one or more shelves. Note, from DDoS 5.5.1, only one retention unit per retention tier is allowed. However, systems set up prior to DDoS 5.5.1 may continue to have more than one retention unit, but you cannot add any more retention units to them. Another benefit of DD Extended Retention software is it enables another tier of storage with a single controller. For example, the DD 9500 with DD Extended Retention software supports up to 864 terabytes of capacity in the active tier and the entire system can scale up to a total of 1.7 petabytes of usable capacity. Assuming backup deduplication ratio that ranges from 10 times to 50 times, DD Extended Retention software could enable scalability up to 86 petabytes for long-term retention of backups. Amortized across so many storage shelves, the cost of the controller at scale becomes minimal. DD Extended Retention provides a cost-effective alternative to physical tape for long-term retention, eliminating the risk and cost of handling, storing, and managing thousands of tape cartridges. The minimal day-to-day -day attention that data domain requires makes it a perfect consolidation platform. Another unique feature that Data Domain System with DD Extended Retention software provides is the fault isolation of retention units. Specifically, when a retention unit gets full, it is sealed off and no new data is written to this unit. 
the sealed retention unit becomes a self-contained system to ensure long-term data preservation. If the data domain system experiences an issue where the retention unit is unavailable, the system continues to operate with all unaffected components. Most other storage systems experiencing this kind of major component failure beyond a RAID group would be completely unavailable and the customer would likely be experiencing partial or total data loss. In the case of the data domain system with extended retention, the system is up and available and all unaffected data is accessible. At this point, one of three things can happen. If it's a minor failure, the devices can be reconnected or fixed and the retention unit would simply come back online. If it's a failure where the retention unit is no longer usable, a new unit can be seeded in the remote site and sent back. If the retention unit is completely lost and no secondary disaster recovery system is present, the file system can be removed and the system can continue to operate beyond the fault. Fault isolation goes even further. If this catastrophe is larger in scope and most of the system is affected, a secondary replica can be plugged into a brand new data domain system and all data that survived the disaster and was salvaged will be available in the new system. For fault isolation purposes, deduplication occurs entirely within the retention unit for DD extended retention enabled DD systems. There is no cross deduplication between active and retention tiers or between different retention units. The active tier and retention tier in a DD extended retention software enabled DD system store their corresponding logical set of storage shelves with RAID 6 protection. The retention tier has its own deduplication index. New writes to the active tier do not check against retention tier indices. With this design, data movement from the active tier to the retention tier can happen transparently without any visible change in the namespace of the moved files. Externally, all the manageable elements of the namespace look like a single data domain system. Extended retention enabled DD systems support the protocols NFS, SIFS, DD Boost, VTL and NDMP. Because the data domain system is designed as a storage of last resort, in other words, a petabyte scale system that is the last stop for all data when it comes to protection and retention, the data domain system with DD extended retention feature also provides data integrity features and fault isolation capabilities that ensure long-term data access and recoverability. The system is protected by RAID 6 functionality that enables the system to withstand dual disk failures without interruption. Additionally, Data Domain's data invulnerability architecture continuously scrubs all stored data, checking data integrity and preventing long-term deterioration from ever affecting the fidelity of the stored data. Replication flexibility refers to entry replication and managed file replication where both types of replication are supported from a source data domain system with DD extended retention license. Replication is then enabled to a destination data domain system without a DD extended retention license. The destination data domain system must be running DDoS 5.5 or higher. 
This is applicable for data in active tiers using SIFS, NFS or VTL protocols. Bidirectional replication is also supported. Dell EMC data domain encryption software allows the user to encrypt data at rest by using the compliant libraries with standard 128-bit or 256-bit advanced encryption standard algorithms. Depending on IT security policies, the block cipher modes for the AES algorithm can be selected either as cipher block chaining or Galois counter mode. DD extended retention is compatible with DD encryption and is supported on both the active tier and retention tier. From DDoS 5.5.1, you can use the encryption of data address feature on DD extended retention enabled DD systems if you have an encryption license. Encryption is not enabled by default. To reclaim space that has been freed up by data moved to the retention tier, you can use space reclamation which runs in the background as a low priority activity. It suspends itself when there are higher priority activities such as data movement and cleaning. Once the retention period of data on the retention tier expires, the system will clean the space and customers can reuse the freed space for newer data. When backup data is deleted from the retention tier, segments referring to those files are unused and thus available for cleaning. Note, sanitization is not supported for DD extended retention enabled DD systems. There are three licenses required to properly configure and enable a data domain system with DD Extended Retention. The first is the DD Extended Retention software option. This license enables the software features and functionality for this type of configuration. Two additional types of licensing are required to enable the hardware storage architecture of the system based on the system configuration. The licenses can be viewed or added using the system manager. There are also optional licenses concerning the locking of files for added security. Data domain extended retention leverages standard data domain system advantages such as DDVTL, DD replicator and DD retention lock. Data Domain Retention Lock software provides immutable file locking and secure data retention capabilities for customers to meet both corporate governance and compliance standards. DD Retention Lock comes in two editions, Data Domain Retention Lock Governance Edition and Data Domain Retention Lock Compliance Edition. Both editions provide the capability for IT administrators to configure minimum and maximum retention periods at the entry level and apply retention policies at an individual file level. Files logged on the active tier will remain logged when migrated over to the retention tier. The Shelf Capacity License enables customers to incrementally add storage capacity. A separate Shelf Capacity License is needed for each storage shelf for shelves installed in both the Active Tier and the Retention Tier. Shelf Capacity Licenses are specific to either an Active or Retention Tier shelf. The appropriate shelf capacity license is required for each new shelf added. The license is specific to an active or retention tier shelf 
and some differences remain between DDoS releases. It also differs for active and extended retention tiers with DD extended retention. The expanded storage license allows for the upgrade of storage capacity for data domain systems. An expanded storage license is required to expand the active tier storage above the entry level capacity depending on the controller model. An expanded storage license also enables the upgrade of a 7 disk system such as DD160, DD620 and DD640 to 12 disks. This lesson covers Data Domain Extended Retention Overview, Supported Hardware, Data Movement to the Retention Tier and Scalable Namespace. This topic presents the basic architecture enabling its unique capabilities of the DD Extended Retention software on a data domain system. Data Domain Extended Retention software transparently incorporates two tiers of storage on a data domain system to achieve cost-effective scalability. Data initially lands in the active tier of the data domain system that is optimized to deliver the high throughput required to ingest hundreds of terabytes of backup data retained for operational recovery. With DD Extended Retention software, the data domain system transparently incorporates a very large second tier of storage, namely the retention tier, that is optimized for the long-term backup retention. A periodic process configured as a policy moves aging data out of the active tier and into the retention tier. It continues to do this until the retention unit is full. One unique property of this architecture is that when full, the unit is sealed for fault isolation. The retention unit becomes a completely self-contained unit of data preservation. The active tier holds the short-term data for disaster recovery purposes, while the retention tier holds static, long-term backup data. This separation of data types is what allows impressive scalability of the retention tier while keeping the performance required for the active tier. With the scalability of retention tier, the average cost of the system per gigabyte becomes lower and lower as the system scales, making data domain systems very cost effective at scale. Let's look at how an administrator would configure the data domain system enabled with DD Extended Retention software. The administrator can configure the data movement policy that moves data from the active tier to the retention tier. This policy is configured for every use case or data stream coming into the data domain system. This policy is based on the last modified time of every file stored in the system and frequency of data movement. When the policy is enforced, data is moved out of the active tier and into the retention unit. Note that each file is only moved once. There is no need for files to be moved again. This out-of-band data movement process capitalizes on more capacity-optimized compression algorithms so that data that is moved out of the active tier is recompressed and packed more tightly into the retention tier as it is moved. Data movement process can be scheduled to run at a specified time. It can be stopped, restarted or throttled. A data domain system enabled with DD Extended Retention software presents one large scalable file system. The file system simply looks like a much larger data domain system to end users and applications. Of course, 
this file system can be completely or partially exposed as SIFS shares, NFS mount points, and VTL for open systems in IBM through DDBoost for backup applications and NDMP. An important point to note is that all incoming data is initially stored in the active tier and it can land very fast. Data can also be read from each tier without any read performance degradation except when the system approaches its maximum capacity. Data domain systems enabled with DD extended attention provide between two to four times the scalability of an equivalent data domain system without the DD extended attention software option. However, one trade-off for this capacity is that some of the data in the retention unit may not be readily available in the memory of the controller. The data could be swapped out of memory, creating a slight delay in accessing. The delay may be a matter of seconds. By contrast, recalling a tape into a tape library can take hours or days compared with a rare, low probability, less than a minute delay in accessing the data in the retention units of a data domain system. The DD Extended Retention software option is available on the hardware platforms shown in this table. ES20s and ES30s provide various storage capacities depending on configuration. This lesson covers customer profile and two use cases. A typical customer profile for the DD extended retention solution might include the characteristics shown here. The main use case for data domain extended retention software is long-term retention of backups with backup directly to the data domain system. Data domain systems allow easy integration using SIFS, NFS, VTL or DDBoost into existing environments and supports all leading backup applications including Dell EMC Networker, Veritas Net Backup, IBM TSM and others. By setting the active tier to be large, the data domain system can store short-term backup data for disaster recovery purposes. The active tier needs to be sized for short-term disaster recovery. The retention tier would be sized based on the retention policy. Optionally, the configuration might include a data domain system at a secondary site for disaster recovery purposes. In this use case, the data domain system with DD extended retention software can be used as an aggregation of long-term backups coming from other data domain systems in remote sites. Depending on how much data is coming in, the active tier may not need to be as big as it would when backing up directly to the system. Leveraging DD Boost software the complexity of replicating data between systems and implementing different retention periods on the replica can be eliminated and all management would be done from the backup application hosting the DD Boost functionality. Optionally, there could be a data domain system in the second site for disaster recovery purposes. This module covered DD Extended Retention as a solution, some of its features and benefits like cost optimization, fault isolation, and replication flexibility. It also discussed the basic system architecture, hardware options, licensing requirements, and use cases. This module focuses on how to install an extended retention system, the hardware and cabling processes, and configuring data domain and data movement 
for extended retention. Installation and configuration of data domain systems with extended retention follows the same high-level workflow as with all other data domain systems. The basic steps are first install hardware by defining the data domain system information for your site. Then perform initial system configuration and configure the system for data access. Next, configure optional software. Finally, perform the optional additional system configuration. This lesson covers preparing the system for extended retention, SAS cabling connectors, SAS ports on controllers, SAS ports on expansion shelves, and HPA to shelf cabling rules. A data domain extended retention solution has many of the same components as a normal system. However, there are some requirements, guidelines and caveats associated with extended retention systems. If you are deploying an extended retention solution, then make sure you have a supported model data domain system on hand or on order. Make sure that you know the location of the serial attached SCSI HPAs on the controller. This can differ from model to model. Also ensure that you know the kind of SAS connector required by the controller. New models of data domain systems are upgraded and enhanced as technology improves. As a result, the connectors have different form factor on the newer systems. Extended retention requires more memory. Verify whether memory upgrade kits have been ordered if needed. There must be three types of licenses installed on the controller. The first is the data domain extended retention license. This license enables the extended retention feature on the controller. The next two license types are for disk capacity. You will need to install enough data domain shelf capacity active tier licenses to support the amount of storage you wish to have in the active tier. You will also need enough data domain shelf capacity archive tier licenses to support the storage space you wish to allocate to the retention tier. Also, when planning for extended retention, pay close attention to the components. Expansion Shelves Extended Retention currently supports two models of expansion shelves. These two models have different flavors in terms of capacity and disk drive type. Make sure to specify an expansion shelf model that is supported by the controller. Because some expansion shelves support SATA and SAS disk drives, you must not only verify the expansion shelf that is supported by the controller, but that the drive type is also supported. Finally, you need to verify the location and type of SAS ports used by the expansion shelf. Cables Cables are required to connect the controllers and expansion shelves. You need two types of cables. The first type connects the controller to an expansion shelf. This cable must have connectors appropriate for each device. Also, if the expansion shelves are not directly next to the controller, you may need a longer cable. You will also need cables to chain expansion shelves together. These cables require SAS connectors that are appropriate for the expansion shelves. These cables are usually short because expansion shelves tend to be installed right next to each other in the equipment rack. Finally, you need to consider the number of racks needed for the equipment, the electrical power consumed by the total solution, and the environmental controls such as air conditioning.
This slide shows the extended retention requirements for the data domain controllers such as DD860, DD990, DD4200, DD4500 and DD6800. Extended retention models differ from the standard controllers in that they require additional RAM and SAS HPAs. This slide shows the extended retention requirements for the data domain controllers such as DD7200, DD9300, DD9500 and DD9800. Extended retention models differ from the standard controllers in that they require additional RAM and SAS HPAs. Let us define a few terms that will be used when discussing extended retention, SAS cabling and expansion shelves. The first term is set. A set describes a group of interconnected expansion shelves. The second term is defined as loop or chain. Loop or chain refers to SAS cabling consisting of a primary and secondary path. The third term is defined as string. A string is a single SAS cabling path. Sometimes it is used to describe a cabling loop. So pay attention to the context in which this term is used. The data domain system supports three types of SAS cable connectors. The connectors are SFF8644, and SFF8088. The SFF8644 connector, also known as HD Mini SAS, is required by newer data domain controllers. This includes the DD4200, 4500, 6800, 7200, 9300, 9500, and 9800 controllers. The SFF8088 connector, also called Mini SAS, is required by the ES30 and DS60 expansion shelves. It is also required by DD860 and DD990 data domain controllers. There are SAS HPAs installed in the controllers that support expansion shelves. Each of the SAS HPAs has at least two ports. One set of shelves is supported by two SAS ports. One SAS HPA port connects to the AH SAS port on the first expansion shelf in the set. Another SAS HPA port connects to the BH SAS port on the last expansion shelf in the set. If more than one SAS HPA is installed in the system, then use a port on one HPA to connect to the AH port on an expansion shelf and a port on another HPA to connect the BH port on another expansion shelf. Normally, the communication from a data domain system controller to a set of expansion shelves is routed through one SAS HPA port. The other SAS HPA port connected at the same set is in a standby state. A cable break or SAS port failure can cause a loss of connectivity from the data domain system controller to the expansion shelves. If there is a cable or port fault, then DDoS reroutes communication to the expansion shelves affected by the break through the other SAS HPA port connected to the same set of expansion shelves. A faulty port on an expansion shelf can also result in a loss of connectivity. If a port on an expansion shelf fails, then DDoS reroutes communication to the expansion shelves affected by the fault through the other SAS HPA port connected to the same set of expansion shelves. A SAS HPA fault causes every device in its associated connectivity chain to become inaccessible. DDoS can reroute SAS connectivity through another HPA if there is one available and it is connected to the same set of expansion shelves. 
When planning how to allocate SAS ports on the Data Domain System Controller, you need to answer a few questions. Which SAS ports will connect to the expansion shelf SAS Interface A? Which SAS ports will connect to the expansion shelf SAS Interface B? Which ES set is controlled by each port? How can all this be done so that redundancy is maintained? Before planning how to use the controller's SAS ports, check the documentation. The installation guides have recommended deployment layouts that may fit your need. If none of the recommended layouts work, then follow these steps to assign the data domain system controller's SAS ports. First, identify the slot numbers into which the SAS interfaces are installed. When planning, Keep the numbering oriented in the same way as on the actual controller. This helps to avoid confusion. Next, identify the port numbering scheme. In this case, the ports are numbered as 0 to 3 from bottom to top. Now divide the ports into groups of 2. Next, reserve the lower numbered port to the expansion shelves SAS Interface A. The higher numbered ports are to be connected to the expansion shelves SAS Interface B. Now identify the expansion shelf sets to be connected to the lowest numbered ports. If possible, assign the sets from left to right. These ports will be connected to the expansion shelves SAS Interface A. Finally, identify the expansion shelf sets to be connected to the next lowest numbered ports. If possible, assign the sets from left to right starting from the second interface. By doing this, you provide redundancy that protects against service interruption caused by the loss of an HBA. These connect to the expansion shelves SAS interface B. The diagram in the slide provides an example of how an expansion port set may be connected to a DD9500 or DD9800 data domain system controller. When a DD9500 is configured for extended retention, it has SAS HBAs in slots 2, 3, 6 and 9. Ports are identified as 3, 2, 1 and 0 from top to bottom. Note, the graphic in the slide only shows the rare bottom half of the controller. The diagram on the screen provides an example of how an expansion port set may be connected to a DD6800 or DD9300 data domain system controller. When a DD6800 or DD9300 is configured for extended retention, it has SAS HBAs in slots 2 and 7. Ports are identified as 3, 2, 1 and 0 from top to bottom. Note, the graphic on the screen only shows the rare bottom half of the controller. The diagram in the slide provides an example of how an expansion port set may be connected to an extended retention version of the DD4200, DD4500 or DD7200 data domain system controller. When a DD4200, 4500 or 7200 is configured for extended retention, it has SAS HPAs in slots 5, 6, 7 and 8. Ports are identified as 3, 2, 1 and 0 from top to bottom. The graphic in the slide only shows the rare bottom half of the back of the controller.
The diagram in this slide provides an example of how an expansion shelf set may be connected to the extended retention version of the DD990 data domain system controller. When a DD990 is configured for extended retention, it has SAS HPAs in slots 9, 8, 5 and 4. Ports are identified as A, B, C and D from top to bottom. The diagram in the slide provides an example of how an expansion shelf set may be connected to the extended retention version of the DD860 data domain system controller. When a DD860 is configured for extended retention, it has SAS HPAs in slots 1, 2 and 3. Ports are identified as D, C, B and A from left to right. The SAS ports on the DDES30 expansion shelf use SFF8088 connectors. There are four connectors on an expansion shelf. Two SAS connectors are mounted on control panel A and two are mounted on control panel B. The leftmost connector on control panel A is a host connector. The host connector can be identified by a circle symbol next to the port. Following the cable connected to this port should lead back to the controller. The rightmost connector on control panel A is an expansion connector. Following the cable connected to this port leads to the next expansion shelf in the chain and away from the controller. The rightmost connector on control panel B is a host connector. Following the cable connected on this port should lead back to the controller. The leftmost connector on control panel B is an expansion connector. Following the cable connected to this port leads to the next expansion shelf in the chain and away from the controller. The ES30 shelves use two circle markings to identify a SAS host port. Two diamonds identify SAS expansion ports. The DS60 expansion shelf uses SFF8088 connectors. It contains two link controller cards. The leftmost controller card is LCCB and the rightmost controller card is LCCA. There are four SAS ports on each LCC. They are numbered as 3, 2, 1 and 0 from left to right. Data domain systems only use ports 0 and 2. Ports 1 and 3 are not supported and should contain a rubber plug to prevent their inadvertent use. Since no port is identified as a host or expansion port, consider port 0 to be the host port and port 2 to be the expansion port. Following the chain of cables connected to the host port leads back to the controller. Following the chain of cables connected to the expansion port leads to the next expansion shelf in the chain and away from the controller. When planning for HBAs, pay close attention to adding shelves and cable length rules. Adding shelves. The cabling and racking are designed so that shelves are added from the bottom up in a rack. Cabling between adjacent shelves in a string is done with the 1 meter SAS cables that are delivered with the shelves. One cable runs from the B controller expansion port of the lower shelf to the B controller host port of the next higher shelf in the string. Then a second cable runs from the A controller host port of lower shelf to the A controller expansion port 
of the next higher shelf. When adding shelves to an existing string, the cable is moved from the B controller host port to the new shelf. Then another 1 meter cable is added shelf to shelf. Cable lengths. The shelves are labeled as V, N, dot M, where V is the volume, numbered with N as the number of the string and M as the number of the shelf in the string. For example, V3.2 refers to the second shelf in the third string. Please note that the cable length required for each HBA port to connect to the correct storage shelf port. Beginning with the fourth string of the expansion shelves, the required cable length increases from 2 to 5 meters. This lesson covers an initial configuration of extended retention feature using Data Domain System Manager. Configuring Data Domain Extended Retention System is similar to configuring a non-extended retention system with a few added or modified steps. For systems shipped with DDoS 6.0, Licenses have to be added and removed using ELMS. For uploading ELMS licensing in the System Manager, go to Administration, Licenses, and select Add. In the Add Licenses window, select ELMS for the license type. Select a valid ELMS file. Click Apply, and then view the ELMS licenses. For systems upgraded to DDoS 6.0 from 5.6 or 5.7, we use the legacy licensing process. The first thing to configure for extended retention on a data domain system is to add licenses appropriate for the configuration. The same process can be used to add the data domain extended retention, data domain expansion storage, data domain shelf capacity active tier, and data domain shelf capacity archive tier licenses. The process to add extended retention related licenses are select administration, licenses, click add licenses, enter one or more licenses, one per line, pressing the enter key after each one, click add when completed. If there are any errors, a summary of the added licenses and those not added because of the error are listed. Select the erroneous license key to fix it. Every shelf in a DD extended retention enabled DD system must have a separate capacity license. Sometimes the extended retention related licenses need to be removed. To do so, the process includes navigate to administration, licenses page, select the license you wish to remove, select delete selected licenses, select OK after reading the warning dialog box and verifying the correct license that has been selected. If the file system has not been created on the data domain system or has been destroyed, then an extended retention file system can be created through this process which includes Navigate to the Data Management File System page in DDSM Select More Tasks and select the option Create File System. The File System Create dialog box is displayed. Select the option to create a DD extended retention file system. Select Next. A new dialog box appears. Choose the option to select the size of the retention unit or keep the configuration of the retention unit. 
select the option to enable the file system after it is created and then select Next. Verify the summary information if it is correct and select Finish. After the file system is created, click OK. The demonstration in this slide has shown the process which includes enabling the DD Extended Retention feature, creating the Archive tier and Retention tier, and allocating storage to both of them. Now that the data domain system is licensed and the extended retention file system has been created, it is time to configure storage. This section will add unallocated storage to the active tier or the retention tier. Of course, the storage expansion shelves must be correctly cabled to the controller for this process to work. Navigate to the Hardware Storage page in DDSF. Select the Overview tab. Select Configure Storage. The Configure Storage dialog box is displayed. Select the expansion shelf to assign either to the active tier or the retention tier. If the expansion shelves listed in the available storage area cannot be selected, then verify the appropriate capacity licenses that have been installed. Select the tier to which the expansion shelf should be assigned. The choices are active tier and retention tier. Select Add to Tier button. The expansion shelf item is moved from the available storage list to the target tier list. Select OK. The system assigns the storage device to the appropriate tier. Select OK if a warning is displayed about the need to expand storage. Add the expanded storage license and expand the storage as needed. The active tier storage status can be reviewed by navigating to the hardware storage page in DDSM, selecting the overview tab, and selecting the plus sign next to the active tier label to expand the section. The active tier status section shows the disks in use along with their associated disk groups. Also shown are the disks not in use. You can review the retention tier storage status by following this process. Navigate to the Hardware Storage page in DDSM. Select the Overview tab. Select the plus sign next to the retention tier label to expand the section. The retention tier status section shows the disks in use along with their associated disk groups. Also shown are the disks not in use. The disk group column provides the name of the disk group that was assigned by the file system. A disk group identifies the disks that are part of a RAID. The disks in a disk group are not restricted to a single expansion shelf, but may include disks from several shelves. Disks not in use identifies disks that are recognized by the system but not assigned to the active tier or retention tier. This lesson provides an overview of how data is moved from the active tier to the retention tier. It also covers how to schedule when data movement is performed under which conditions and how to manage the movement. Data movement feature on an extended retention system 
relocates data from the active tier to the retention tier for long-term storage. The data movement process can be started manually or automatically through the use of data movement policies. Data movement uses four attributes to govern the operation of the data movement process. The data movement policy defines the age at which files are moved from the active tier to the retention tier. Age refers to the amount of time since the file was last modified, not the amount of time since the file was created. You may set a global value for all files in the system and a value specific to an entry. If there is no threshold value assigned to an entry, then the global threshold value is used. A schedule is also part of the policy. This schedule determines when the data movement process is run. Because the data movement process and the file system cleaning process are both resource intensive and to avoid these two processes from competing for scarce system resource, the policy can direct cleaning to run right after the data movement process finishes. To start the data movement process manually, follow these steps. Using DDSM, navigate to the Data Management File System page. Click the Start button associated with Data Movement Status line on the screen. The Start Data Movement dialog box appears. The File System page for a DD Extended Retention System shows the status of data as it is moved from the active to the archive tier. The target unit in the archive tier is the recipient of the data. The status includes when the data movement is completed, the number of files copied and the amount of data copied in GB. Clicking the data movement status start button starts the data movement based on the defined data movement policy. If cleaning is already in progress, Starting the data movement schedules the data movement to run after the clean completes. The data movement status is shown in the file system tab. The start button is replaced by a stop button. Clicking stop stops the data movement. Click OK in the stop data movement dialog box to confirm. Click start to proceed and click OK when the start data movement process completes. The data movement policy is applied to all user data on the system. However, the policy's threshold value can be overwritten on a per entry basis. To create a data movement policy, follow this process. Using DDSM, navigate to the Data Management File System page. Select the Configuration tab. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click Edit to the right of Data Movement Policy. The Data Movement Policy dialog box opens. Specify a system-wide default file age threshold value greater than or equal to 14 days. Specify when data movement should take place. Dell EMC recommends you to schedule data movement and file system cleaning every 14 days. In the data movement throttle section, specify the percentage of available users the system uses for data movement. A value of 100% indicates that data movement will not be throttled. Finally, it indicates if file system cleaning should be run after data movement completes. Dell EMC recommends this option to be enabled and it is enabled by default. Select OK.
The data movement policy throttles, schedules, and starts the file system cleaning after data movement settings are global. They are applied to all data on the system. However, the data movement feature allows you to override the default threshold setting and apply a new setting on a per M3 basis. To do so, the process includes using DDSM, navigate to the data management M3 page. Select the target M3 from the M3 list. Select the summary tab. If necessary, scroll down to data movement policy section. The current file age threshold assigned to the target M3 is displayed. Select edit to change the threshold value for the target M3. The modify age threshold dialog box is displayed. Configure the file age threshold. A value of none causes this M3 to be ignored by the data movement process and no data is relocated from the active tier to the retention tier. Select OK. This slide shows an example of a data movement policy with an M3 specific threshold. The data movement policy is applied to all M3s on the system. For the daily BU M3, this works fine because it holds incremental backup files whose worth only lasts until the next full backup. Because the value of the data is short-lived, there is no need to retain these files for an extended period of time. The global threshold value of none ensures that the files in the daily BU M3 will never be moved to the retention tier. The full BU M3 holds full backup files that are created every week. The data movement policy is also assigned to this M3. Unfortunately, the global threshold setting will not work for this M3 because there is a need to retain the full backup files for an extended period of time. To address this issue, an M3 specific threshold of 14 days is created to override the threshold in the data movement policy. A threshold of 14 days ensures that two full backups will be available on the active tier, while older full backups will be on the retention tier. Note, ensure that the active tier is large enough to hold the backup. The example in this slide shows that the data cannot be separated into daily BU and full BU entries. The retention period of daily incremental backups is 8 weeks and the retention period for weekly full backups is 3 years. In this case, set the age threshold to 9 weeks. If it sets lower, then daily incremental data would be moving as soon as it is to be deleted. Avoid these common sizing errors. Setting a data movement policy that is overly aggressive in which data is moved too soon. Setting a data movement policy that is too conservative. Once the active tier fills up, no more data can be written to the system. Defining an undersized active tier such that the active tier fills up prematurely. Caution. Avoid creating an overly aggressive movement policy to compensate for an undersized active tier. Space is not always reclaimed in the archive tier. So moving files that are to be deleted or updated too soon into the archive tier results in wasted space. When a unit is sealed, space can no longer be reclaimed until all of the data in the archive unit expires. When planning for data movement, pay close attention to the guidelines. Cleaning. 
Cleaning is performed on the active tier either as scheduled or by default immediately after files have been moved from the active to the retention tier. Snapshots Be aware of the caveats related to snapshots and file system cleaning. Files and snapshots are not cleaned even after they have been moved to the retention tier. Space cannot be reclaimed until the snapshots have been deleted. Dell EMC recommends the file age threshold for snapshots to be set to the minimum of 14 days. The data movement packing feature compacts data in the target partition after every time the data movement process runs. This feature is enabled by default. When this feature is enabled, the overall compression of the retention tier improves, but there is a slight increase in migration time. The process to determine if this feature is enabled includes Navigate to Data Management, File System Page in DDSM. Select the Configuration tab. The current value for packing data during retention tier data movement is shown in the slide. The acceptable values are either enabled or disabled. The space reclamation feature on the retention tier enables customers to recover space for expired data on the retention tier and allows the reclaim space to be used for storing new data. You can reclaim space from deleted data in the retention tier by running space reclamation. Space reclamation also occurs during file system cleaning. The process to manage the space reclamation feature includes Select Data Management, File System. Just above the tabs, the space reclamation status shows the amount of space that is reclaimed after deleting data in the retention tier. Select the Start button to enable space reclamation. If space reclamation is disabled, then a Start button is displayed. If it is enabled, then Stop and Suspend buttons are displayed. If the space reclamation is in a suspended state, then Stop and Resume buttons are displayed. After the warning is displayed, click Start in order to proceed. After space reclamation starts, select More information for details on the status of the feature. After reviewing the Space Reclamation Detail Information dialog box, select Close. This module covered installation and configuration of data domain extended retention systems, their hardware and cabling processes, and data movement configuration. This module focuses on the data domain operations such as garbage collection, compression, replication, and disaster recovery. This lesson covers file system cleaning in the active tier and space reclamation in the retention tier of a data domain extended retention system. In a data domain extended retention system, file system cleaning is performed on the active tier either as scheduled or by default, immediately after files have been moved from the active to the retention tier. Files and snapshots are not cleaned even after they have been moved to the archive tier. The space cannot be reclaimed until the snapshots have been deleted. Set the retention for snapshots to less than two weeks.
The space reclamation feature on the retention tier enables customers to recover space for expired data on the retention tier and allows the reclaimed space to be used for storing new data. Space reclamation occurs as a background process that can be suspended, paused, restarted and is applicable to data already stored on the retention tier. It has lesser priority over cleaning. If space reclamation is running and if cleaning is manually started, space reclamation will be preempted for the duration of cleaning and will resume once the higher priority activity is complete. Both CLI and the system manager provide capabilities to start, stop, suspend or resume the process and report high leveled detailed status. Note that once started, space reclamation will run until stopped. Also, since space reclamation is an intensive process that uses a lot of system resources, it may be suspended from time to time by the system to accommodate higher priority processes. To take advantage of the space reclamation feature, Dell EMC recommends that you schedule data movement and file system cleaning every two weeks. Also update existing data movement schedules to occur every two weeks. Schedule cleaning to run after data movement completes. Do not schedule cleaning separately. Before changing the data movement schedule, provision storage in the active tier to hold one additional week of data. This lesson covers global compression, local compression and its guidelines in active and retention tier of a data domain extended retention system. Data domain compresses data at two levels, global and local. Global compression, also called deduplication, is a process by which data domain system removes redundant data. It uses a CISL architecture to deduplicate data. Local compression is a process of reducing the amount of space taken by data. It uses the compression algorithms LZ, GZ and GZ fast. The default local compression setting is LZ. In data domain extended retention system, the storage is separated in two tiers, the active tier and the retention or archive tier. They are two independent deduplicated domains. For fault isolation purposes, Deduplication occurs entirely within the retention unit for DD extended retention enabled systems. There is no cross deduplication between active and retention tiers. Users can only inject data to the active tier. Later, using the data movement feature, the data can be migrated from the active tier to the archive tier. Local compression in the active tier uses the compression algorithms LZ, GZ or GZ fast. The default local compression setting is LZ. The retention tier by default uses the GZ local compression algorithm to store data, meaning it generally achieves higher overall data compression ratio when compared with the active tier. GZ compression achieves 10% to 20% less than LZ on average. However, some data sets achieve much higher compression. Note that this causes an increase in resource utilization and decrease in performance when reading data from the retention tier. 
In the retention tier, using the data movement packing feature, data is compacted in the target partition after every file migration. This feature is enabled by default. When this feature is enabled, the overall compression of the retention tier improves, but there is a slight increase in migration time. The local compression algorithm for subsequent data movement to the retention tier can be modified. Both CLI and the System Manager provide capabilities to configure local compression types in active and retention tier. Note that when modifying the local compression algorithm of the retention tier, it will be applied on subsequent data movement to the retention tier. In the active tier, it will be applied to subsequent data written to active tier. This lesson covers M-Tree Replication, DD Boost Managed File Replication, Collection Replication, and Directory Replication. Replication typically consists of a source DD system and one or more destination DD systems. Supported replication types depend on the data to be protected. To protect data on a system as a source, a DD Extended Retention Enable system supports Collection Replication, Entry Replication, and DD Boost Managed File Replication. To protect data from other systems as a destination, a DD Extended Retention Enable system supports Collection Replication, Entry Replication, DD Boost Managed File Replication, and directory replication. The basic topology for M-Tree replication with DD extended retention is depicted on this slide. In this example, there is bidirectional replication between system A and system B and unidirectional replication from system C and system B. No data migration for M-Trees are involved in ongoing M-Tree replication. Note that a data domain system with DD extended retention license can be the destination for M-Tree replication from any DD system. This enables you to protect the data within the active tier of one system by replicating it to the active tier of another controller with DD extended retention. Note that although you can use M-Tree replication to protect data for certain M-Trees on a controller, with DD extended retention, data movement must not be configured for those M-Trees. This is applicable only for those M-Trees that need to stay only in the active tier. Bidirectional replication is supported between systems that have the DD Extended Retention license. This is applicable for data written via SIFS, NFS, and VTL. The basic topology for DD Boost Managed File Replication with DD Extended Retention is depicted in this slide. In this example, there is bidirectional replication between system A and system B and unidirectional replication from system C to system B. Data migration in the HR storage unit on system A does not force data migration on the passive HR storage unit, system B. Data migration on the passive HR storage unit, system B, happens independently. Data migration can be configured on the passive legal storage unit on system B. With DD Boost Managed File Replication, supported topologies are one-to-one, many-to-one, bidirectional, one-to-many, and cascaded. Note that with DD Boost 2.3 or later, you can specify how multiple copies are to be made 
and managed within the backup application. The basic topology for collection replication with DD extended retention is depicted in this slide. In this example, data is written to system A and is stored in the active tier and replicated to the active tier of system B. In system A, data is moved to retention tier as per the policy. Data is then replicated to retention unit of system B. Collection replication takes place between corresponding active tier and retention tier. If the active tier or retention tier at the source fails, the data can be copied from the corresponding unit at the remote site onto a new unit which is shipped to the customer site as a replacement unit. The requirements for setting up collection replication on systems with DD extended retention include the following. Both the source and destination systems must be configured as controllers with DD extended retention enabled. The file system must not be enabled on the destination until the retention unit has been added and replication configured. Only unidirectional replication is supported. Both the source and destination systems need to have the same DDoS version. Data migration policies are configured on the source system. This slide shows the basic topology for directory replication with DD extended retention. Start by ingesting data to a directory on both system A and system B and then unidirectional directory replication from system A and system B to system C. Set the data movement policies on system C for that entry to move to retention tier. There is no migration for the backup directory data when involved in ongoing directory replication. With directory replication, the system with DD extended retention is used as a replication target and supports one-to-one -one and many-to-one topologies from any data domain system. Requirements for directory replication on systems with DD extended retention include Bidirectional directory replication is not supported. A DD extended retention system cannot be a source of directory replication. It can only be a destination. Directory replication data sets cannot be moved to the archive tier. To review the configuration of the replication feature, navigate to Replication, Automatic, Summary tabs. The Replication Summary table provides you high-level information about the configuration of each context. Selecting a context causes the system to display detailed information about that context in the detailed information section of the screen. Remember to scroll down to see all detailed information pertaining to the selected context. Since collection, entry and directory contexts have different requirements, the detailed information shown changes depending on the context type. This lesson covers disaster recovery configurations, granular collection replication, and overall recovery strategy.
A system with DD extended retention is equipped with tools to address failures in different parts of the system. A system with DD extended retention software option is designed to remain available to service read and write requests when a retention unit is lost. The file system may not detect that a retention unit is lost until the file system restarts or tries to access data stored in the retention unit. After the file system has detected that the retention unit is lost, it returns an error in response to requests for data stored in that unit. If the active tier and the retention unit are lost and there is no replica available, contact Dell EMC support for assistance. If data is lost and cannot be recovered from a replica, contact Dell EMC support for assistance. For customers needing a disaster recovery configuration to keep a second copy of all data stored in a separate system that is protected from disasters and catastrophes in a remote site, Dell EMC Data Domain Replicator software provides simple fast, robust WAN-based disaster recovery for the enterprise. It offers numerous replication types and policies and also supports a wide variety of topologies to meet the needs of various deployments. Between two data domain extended retention systems, empty replication can be configured between entries in active tier DD Boost Managed File Replication can be configured between storage units and Collection Replication can be configured between the two data domain extended retention systems. In a failure situation, perform recovery actions in the following order. Restore connection between the system controller and storage. If the system controller is lost, replace it with a new system controller. If there is a loss of data and a replica is available, try to recover the data from the replica. If a replica is not available, limit any loss of data by leveraging the fault isolation features of the DD extended retention through Dell EMC support. The new source must be configured as a DD extended retention system. The file system must not be enabled on the new source until the archive unit has been added and replication recovery has been initiated. Install the replication license on the new source. Reset the authentication key on the destination. Reconfigure replication on both the new source and destination. Initiate recovery on the new source. The file system must not have been enabled on the new source before this step. Check the replication status. This module covered configuration and monitoring of garbage collection process such as active tier cleaning and space reclamation on retention tier. It also covered compression, replication types and disaster recovery on a data domain extended retention system. This module focuses on the requirements for upgrading data domain extended retention system software. It also explains the upgrade procedures for data domain systems with extended retention. This lesson covers the general requirements, caveats and restrictions. The first step in the upgrade process is to verify if the third-party applications 
that are used to manage backups and interact with the data domain system are compatible with DDoS 6.0. This includes backup applications, DD Boost enabled applications, and archive applications. There are a number of documents available to assist this endeavor. They include Data Domain Backup Compatibility Guide, Data Domain Boost Version Compatibility Guide, and Data Domain Archive Product Compatibility Matrix. For more information, refer to Data Domain Software Compatibility website. The next step in the upgrade process is to verify the data domain system controller's compatibility with the extended retention feature on DDoS 6.0. As shown in the slide, DDoS 6.0 supports nine models for use with extended retention. The extended retention capabilities must be migrated to a supported controller if the current ER-enabled controller is not listed in the compatibility matrix. Also, the data domain system controller must have the appropriate amount of RAM as well as the required number of SAS modules. The next step is to verify the DDoS upgrade path. In order to upgrade to DDoS 6.0, the target system must be running DDoS version 5.6.1.x, later releases of 5.6 or 5.7.x. This restriction is due to RPM signing. While upgrading DDoS, it supports the ability to upgrade two release families at a time. If the data domain system controller is running an earlier version of DDoS, then a multi-step upgrade may be required. In order to upgrade to release 6.0 from a release family earlier than 5.6, you will need to upgrade in steps. The slide shows some possible upgrade paths. Be careful to review the release notes and upgrade instructions for every upgrade step. For more information, visit the EMC support site. Finally, you need to verify if the data domain system configuration is compatible with the extended retention feature on DDoS 6.0. If the configuration uses the replication feature, then few configuration parameters need to be verified. First, verify that the system is not the replication source in a directory replication pair. An ER-enabled system can only be a directory replication destination. Next, verify if the collection replication is paired with a system that is also ER-enabled. Collection replication on an ER-enabled system can only be used if both the source and destination are ER-enabled systems. Now verify if replication parameter, low bandwidth and optimization are disabled on all contexts. LBO is not supported on ER-enabled systems. This lesson covers how to convert a data domain file system to a file system with the DD Extended Retention software option and upgrading a DD controller with the DD Extended Retention. The steps to convert standard data domain to ER-enabled data domain include navigate to the Administration Licenses page, verify if the Extended Retention License is installed, use DDSM to navigate to the Data Management File System page, select the More Task, Enable DD Extended Retention option, 
This option is available only if the system has not already been configured for DD extended retention. Be aware that after DD extended retention has been enabled, it cannot be disabled without destroying the file system. If the file system is already enabled, then you are prompted to disable it. Click Disable to do so. If prompted to confirm that you want to convert the file system for use by DD Extended Retention, then click OK. After a file system is converted into a DD Extended Retention file system, the file system page is refreshed to include information about both the tiers and there is a new tab labeled Retention Units. Navigate to the Data Management File System page. Select the Summary tab. Verify the compression statistics that are displayed for the active and retention tiers. And verify that there is a Retention Units tab. The upgrade process is initiated by the System Upgrade Start command which must specify an RPM file in the slash ddvar slash releases directory. If the active tier is available, then the process upgrades the active tier and the retention unit and puts the system into a state that the previous upgrade has not been verified to be completed. This state is cleared by the file system after it is enabled and verified that the retention tier has been upgraded. A subsequent upgrade is not permitted until this state is cleared. If the active tier is not available, then the upgrade process upgrades the system chassis and places the system into a state where it is ready to create or accept a file system. If a retention unit becomes available after the upgrade process has finished, then the unit is automatically upgraded when it is plugged into the system or at the next system start. This module covered the requirements to upgrade DD Extended Retention System software. It also explained the upgrade procedures for data domain systems with extended retention. This course covered DD extended retention features and functionality and its use cases. It also provided a high level explanation of the DD extended retention architecture. It explained how to install, configure, manage, and administer a data domain system with the extended retention option. This concludes the training. Proceed to the course assessment on the next slide.